On April 10th uh, of 1191, Richard's 200-vessel fleet departs from Messina. Three days later, on Good Friday, a storm blows up. Uh, Richard is able to keep most of the fleet together, but some ships are blown off course. Uh, on April 17th, the fleet uh, rendezvous at Crete, and Richard realizes that around 25 of his ships have been lost, and including the large ship containing Richard's sister, Joan, and his fiancée, Berengaria. Uh, so I'm going to start off uh, by addressing the first question to, to you first, Dr. Schroeder. Is there any truth to this idea that we get sometimes from novels that Joan was Richard's favorite sibling, that he had an especially close friendship with her? I frankly think that's unlikely and probably is more fictional than fact. They were seven years apart, which means that she was born, Richard was already seven, he would have been 14 when she starts to be, you know, an adorable child, uh, at which point he was basically off in his own household. You can't exclude it. We know very, very little about medieval uh, childhood in general and about, you know, children relationship. We should never exclude the possibility that children would, would bond it happens all over the world in you know, any society. But I don't think we have any evidence of it. Let me put it that way. I think, however, that we can probably say that as a result of this adventure, which the two of them go through together over the next year and a half, the entire time that they're on the, on the crusade, on the third crusade, they probably did develop a very close relationship. It would be difficult for two people to spend as much time as they did together in such difficult and unusual circumstances without that becoming a bond, which then is reflected later in the rest of, of Richard's career. Uh, Dr. Donaghy, did you have anything to add to that? Or? Oh, no, I'd, I'd agree. I mean, Richard was, you know, seven years older than, than, than Joan, so by the time he sort of become aware of her as a, as a separate person, as a child, that he himself would be disappearing off to, off to Aquitaine from the early 1170s onwards, and didn't really, wouldn't have seen her really until he uh, arrived in, in Sicily, um, you know, some many, many years later. Um, I suppose the case is that nothing breeds familiarity like um, shared adversity, really. So I think it's much more of an invention from later on that their relationship becomes closer because of all of the, you know, the, the hardships that they face from in Sicily and Cyprus and, and, and the Crusade and onwards. I think maybe what we said, one of the things that seems to, to foster that, that myth is that when Richard arrives, he immediately takes the side of his sister against the, um, you can call him the usurper, usurper or the, anyway, the successor of her husband, William I of Sicily, who has sequestered her, Joan, and has also uh, seized her dower or her dower portion. And, and therefore, Richard immediately goes and, and basically goes to war for her rights. Um, that's often interpreted as, you know, for doing it for her. In fact, he's doing it for the English crown. Right. A king doesn't allow his sister to be treated like that, or it, or it, is a, it would denigrate his uh, status if he allowed someone to do that to his sister. So I think we can say that that initial um, campaign for her rights is, has more to do with his own honor than with hers, though it obviously benefits her as well. It certainly, I think it was 20,000 ounces of gold or something was uh, the sum given to him in the end for, um, for the return of her dower, um, which is a substantial amount of money when you're you know, trying to finance a, a crusade and everything. So yep. it's not mm. something to be easily overlooked on that aspect by Richard. Silver, 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 silver. 